Welcome to Sheboygan County Government Working For You. My name is Adam Payne, Sheboygan County Administrative Coordinator and co-host of this program. Although as you can see, my fearless leader and County Board Chairman Bill Gehring is not with us today. He had another conflict and was unable to join us. But I am very pleased to introduce our guest, Jim Riesenberg, who is the Veteran Services Officer. He's been in that capacity for some time for Sheboygan County and does a tremendous job. Jim, welcome. Thank you, Adam. Good to be here. Jim, please start by sharing with our viewers a little bit about yourself and how long you've been the Veteran Services Officer. Well, <clears throat> the office itself goes back to 1935. Uh, we're observing 70 years of service uh, in 2005. Uh, we've had, uh, I'm the fifth person to hold the job, Jacob Ox. Uh, I'm don't, not sure that too many people remember uh, Jacob Ox or his successor, George Gessert. Uh, George served until 1954 when John Campman came on board. And a lot of people that I deal with, especially the older World War II veterans, uh, remember John. John served for 30 years from 1954 to 1984. Uh, his successor was Katie Holtshue, and she worked until 1987. And, and I came aboard uh, in January of 1987. I had, <clears throat> I had, uh, been working uh, at the Gilson, but then Gilson Brothers plant in Plymouth and working part-time in radio. And, and the County Legion Council president at that, commander at that time, Norb Cooney from Sheboygan Falls, said, get over there and apply for the job or we'll kick your butt until you do. <laughs> so I went over and applied for the job and through the county board process uh, was selected. So since 1987, you're going to be coming up on your 20th anniversary here in a couple of years, but there's another very important anniversary that's coming up. I hope up. I last that long. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's a challenging job, but uh, I have so far not found too many things that I don't like about it. Now, you mentioned to me that, uh, and I know you shared with me earlier this year, late last year, a logo and You've got the 70, 70th uh, anniversary coming up. Why don't you yeah, touch we on did, that? We, uh, I really don't know. We didn't, uh, in tough times, so we didn't really budget any money for any type of 70th anniversary uh, get-together other than perhaps maybe an open house on, on Veterans Day. But we did uh, design a, a, a small logo, uh, a foil-type seal to put on stationery, and we did also uh, redo our stationery to reflect uh, 70 years of serving those who served. Outstanding. What's the mission or primary responsibilities of your office? Uh, do it with a smile. <laughs> uh, the, our mission statement is quite simple, to serve those who serve. Uh, the actual process of serving those who served sometimes presents uh, a, a quite a challenge. Basically, uh, we advocate for and assist veterans, uh, their survivors and dependents, in accessing uh, state, federal, and county programs that were designed specifically for them. And when you say to serve those that serve, there's nearly 10,000 veterans in Sheboygan County alone. And we're seeing more now with some of the global terrorism and mm. efforts across the, across the, the globe that are being mm. fought. And, and um, what, what does that mean from a standpoint of the services you're providing and your ability to, to address everyone's needs? Well, uh, uh, population-wise, uh, we have just over, I think the latest figure, 10,100. And uh, in 2004, we laid uh, 234 veterans to rest in this county. And the same, the same year, uh, we only had 40 new veterans come into the county. So uh, we're laying one to rest about every 36 to 40 hours. But uh, we're getting older faster than we're getting younger as a group. But uh, as far as the, uh, the current uh, global war on terrorism activity, uh, the, the basic programs that have been there for World War II veterans are still in place. Uh, to their credit, uh, both the federal and the state VAs have modified their programs uh, with the state with the eligibility uh, type issues. Uh, Garden Reserve, reservist ordered to active duty uh, are being made eligible for state benefits, uh, state VA benefits, and that's something we didn't have in the past, and it's something we as a service officer organization uh, have lobbied for for several years. On the federal level, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the big issue on the federal level, obviously, uh, if you watch the news, uh, is providing for the injured uh, servicemen and women who are coming home. 
the uh, VA has gone out of their way to make sure that these people get into the system. Uh, if they do have problems, let's get those problems addressed right now. And uh, the, cha the challenge to that uh, is really being able to sit down with them or get them, uh, make them aware that there is help out there. If, if, if it's a physical injury or if it's emotional problems, uh, there is help out there. And unfortunately, <clears throat> the government uh, isn't going to come running after you. It is not, they owe you, you owe them money. So they're not going to come running after you and say, listen, you have to do this or you have to do that. So that's where the uh, uh, groups like, like our office, our service officer groups, and the veterans organizations uh, doing, the, doing the outreach and, and the public awareness, outreach to the individual uh, troops, and, and the public awareness to the families, the significant others, and to the, to the general public to, you know, there's help there, but it's just a matter of knowing where to go to get it. And when you talk about that help, we may have some viewers who have loved ones who are in Afghanistan or in Iraq or have recently returned and you touched on some of the initial the uh, the assistance that's being provided there especially if someone's injured I imagine we have a number of viewers who are one of those 10,100 that uh, may need service or perhaps haven't asked of asked of for assistance in the past what types of programs do you offer what would be from A to Z in a snapshot of some of the programs and services your office provides? Okay, Basic, <clears throat> basically, uh, uh, the, the, federal, the federal VA is divided into three basic uh, categories. Uh, one is the Department of Memorial Affairs, which obviously deals with the cemetery, uh, the grave markers, and, and this type of thing, and the funeral honors. The other part is the, uh, the Veterans Health Administration, which uh, provides for the health needs and the third one, which is the big one, is the Veterans Benefits Administration, which deals with, the, with compensation and pension. And that, that basically covers everything. Veterans Benefits Administration covers the loan guarantee program, covers the compensation, it covers the uh, uh, pension, it covers the dependent uh, money programs, it covers the education uh, benefits, uh, the voc rehab, the insurance, oh, that is the biggest one. So uh, that basically is it. And, it, it doesn't sound like a lot, but uh, it covers a lot of territory, and, there's a, and the state programs pretty much are along, along the same lines. There's loans, grants, and, and that's it. So it's all there. It, in, it's pretty easy to categorize it, either, either the memorial affairs, uh, money, or health. So if someone's looking for more information, has questions after hearing what you just said was provided, where do they start? Well, uh, the 800 number has always been available, the 1-800-827-1000. Uh, obviously, we live in a dot-com world, and the VA uh, internet, uh, the federal VA internet, uh, va.gov, and the, state, or the website, the state website, uh, dva, dva.state.wi.us, and of course, the Sheboygan County website, the, the www.co.sheboygan.wi.us. And we, uh, I have, that's one thing I've noticed in the past. I think uh, we've probably gotten more email inquiries uh, this month than we did the first five years. That uh, We haven't had computers, for, and at least not in my office for that long, but uh, the, it's been a gradual increase and I credit a lot of that to uh, our county IS department, uh, getting things out on the website and uh, making the public aware. And I look at the, the web count hit for the first three months of this year uh, on the different programs in, that I have on, the, our, on my page on the website. And the, the websites and the education, uh, the different programs pretty much uh, correlates with the time that I sent out the news releases to the radio and the newspaper. So uh, it's very effective. Excellent. And for those of you who um, are looking for more information and want to get on the website, and hopefully TV8 will put the website address up on the screen, uh, Sheboygan County put a county website in place. It's probably been about three, four years now, and Jim, to his credit, has done a tremendous job getting information out there, keeping it timely, and it is a good source to go to to, to get additional information. Jim, you, you said earlier that your mission statement is simply to serve those 
who have served. You also mentioned, however, that you not only work with those individuals, but their family members, their spouses. And if a spouse or a family member is watching this program, specifically what types of programs or services, what types of assistance can you offer them? Well, basically, uh, for, the, for, for a spouse, there really are not any programs per se. Uh, if they become a surviving spouse or a widow, or, and it, it depends on the circumstances. Uh, the, the one that we see the most of is widow's pension. Uh, widow's pension for the surviving spouse or of a, the unremarried surviving spouse of a deceased veteran, uh, whether they are in a nursing home, in an assisted living facility, or if they're uh, living at home. It's an income-based program, all VA pension programs are, so uh, I think I, who can live on $564 a month? Nobody can, but uh, that's the only number that I can think of right off the top of my head. So, and those are the programs, the federal programs that would be available uh, for those uh, servicemen who, or uh, well, let's say spouse, let me back up here just a bit. Uh, we're doing an outreach, or trying to do an outreach to nursing homes and assisted living facilities. The surviving spouse is taken to be a widow or a widower. So if, if the male, if your wife is a veteran and she passes on and you find yourself in, in where you could qualify as a surviving spouse, uh, I don't think a lot of people understand that, so we're, we're trying to outreach to that. Uh, there are some of the state programs, the state grant programs that a surviving spouse may use if she qualifies, either for education, for, for health care, or subsistence. So the programs are out there, and again, uh, many of them are need-based programs, so uh, the bottom line is if, if you have a lot of money, don't expect the state or the federal government to spend their money on you if you have a lot of your own. However, if you're on the other end of the scale, we certainly want to talk to you and see if we can qualify you. Well, we have a a very, very important day fast approaching. Mm. And it's one that many people may put on their calendars as one to go vacationing or to take an extra day off of work. <laughs> but uh, as you know, Memorial Day is gonna be here May 30th. You're always involved with some community activities and events in, throughout Sheboygan County. And sometimes I think that when Memorial Day comes and goes, uh, many people, especially younger people perhaps who haven't been touched as directly may not think about or reflect on what Memorial Day is all about. So let me start by asking you, what does Memorial Day mean to you? Well, uh, I suppose I probably see it from a different point of view because of the, of the job that I have, but uh, I think it's a time for all of us to, to probably pause and reflect uh, on just what, what happened. What, you know, so we're going to march behind a bunch of old guys who can hardly walk and we're going to hear somebody say how good it is and it's going to go bang, bang and we're going to hear taps and, and that's it. But uh, it's a day when, and I think we should probably reassess our commitment uh, to America. You know, if we, we, need to, we need to look around and, and realize that there are a lot of men and women since the Civil War and probably even as we speak, uh, are giving their day their today for our tomorrow and I, we need to realize that and I don't think a lot of people do I think families uh, it probably has a, a, a greater meaning to families with military background or, or people with the military uh, in their part of were part of the military at one time but unfortunately I think for a lot of the rest of the world you know the, the smoke will still be in the air and you'll still be able to hear the rifle volley echoing across the hills, and my guess is probably 90% of the people will have forgotten what the day is all about. You know, and I, it, it's, it's sad, but one of two days a year that we, kind of like uh, Christmas tree ornaments, we take them out once a year and put them on and take them down. And the same thing with veterans. Memorial Day and, and Veterans Day, we take them out, parade them around, and, and put them back and forget about them for another six months. But I think people need to, especially the younger generation, uh, need to take some time to maybe, uh, history doesn't tell us a lot about it, uh, get more veterans into schools and into settings like that to, to share what, uh, what freedom really means. Right. One of the things that I found very encouraging and, and really endearing to be a part of this community was when uh, some soldiers, soldiers returned from Iraq and 
we had the Welcome Home in Sheboygan, mm -hmm. and they started going through Greenbush and through Plymouth and mm -hmm. on to Sheboygan. And my wife and I and our three children went out to greet them. And a lot of folks had to wait. I think it was two, two and a half hours because they were running a little late. Mm -hmm. But it was just so heartwarming to see the turnout throughout Sheboygan County. Mm -hmm and both young and old and all the posters and signs that I think a lot of school children prepared and at least that's an indication that perhaps the last couple of few years there's been a renewed awareness or at least more than there may have been because of some of the things happening around the world? Probably, well, maybe calling it a good war is not the proper terminology to use, but probably because uh, of the, uh, uh, everything that led, has led up to both the Persian Gulf War uh, and the current global war on terrorism. I think it would it'll be 30 years ago on next Saturday that the Vietnam War ended, and uh, not too many Vietnam veterans remember a parade or a welcome home of any kind. Right. So it, uh, it I think in a way, I've, I've talked to several uh, who were not real pleased about it, and, and others who have kind of, I told a couple of them, well, if you've got a Vietnam license plate on your vehicle, get in the parade and follow along. Yeah, yeah. So, well, back to Memorial Day and the activities that you're going to be involved with. What can you share with our viewers? What's coming up? Well, uh, the, the city program uh, is pretty much the same as it has been for the last 65 years. They'll have the, the, the parade and, and a program over at Fountain Park. I think the parade starts around uh, 8.30 or 9 o'clock. We have another meeting next Thursday night to finalize everything. Uh, the city of Plymouth, uh, likewise, I think their program start, parade starts around 9.30 and it ends over at Union Cemetery with a, with a, a program. Uh, I haven't gotten, I've tried to get them all on the county website as they come in. I've asked the organizations to send me the information uh, when, they have these, when they have their program set. So that notice went out to them last Saturday, Monday, so I hopefully, uh, as, it, as the information does come in, uh, the IS department will put it on the uh, county, on the county webpage on, and on the Veterans Service Office webpage. My participation is pretty much limited to uh, marching with the Vietnam Veterans Color Guard, uh, and that's it. That's enough for one day. <laughs> <laughs> and, and of course, the GI breakfast down at the VFW uh, on, on Evans Street. And Sunday, Sunday morning, a, uh, the uh, special church service, I don't remember the name of the church, but uh, that information will be in a news release that goes out uh, in the next couple of weeks. Are you also going to have um, uh, an activity at either Sunny Ridge or Rocky Knoll or both? No, none that I know of. They don't usually have a Memorial Day program. Okay. They okay. save theirs for Flag Day and Veterans Day. Very good. Very good. Well, again, if you're looking for more information on that, look at the county website, or I'm sur sure Jim's going to be getting news releases out and sharing with folks what ac activities are coming up. Um, Memorial Day, obviously, is a day where a lot of people take a moment to go out to cemeteries across the county and, and as you said, reflect on the loss of a loved one and your office has a role in that as well. Oh boy, do we ever, <laughs> yes. As a matter of fact, uh, the, we have 26 veterans organizations in Sheboygan County. We also have 108 cemeteries in Sheboygan County and, and th those uh, organizations, I think last year, I think last year was the first year that uh, we surpassed uh, 10,000 flags on uh, graves of deceased veterans here in Sheboygan County. It's, it's, uh, it's a lot of work. Uh, I know if you look at the numbers, I think the, uh, the biggest cemetery, of course, the, the Lutheran Wildwood Complex, and just over 2,000 flags get placed out there. And I think the uh, American Legion and the VFW from here in town take care of that. And then the smallest one is, <coughs> excuse me, this is the Sharp Cemetery out in Elkhart Lake, and that has uh, one soldier in it, Private Edwin Sharp from the Civil War. So it, it's, a, it's a, a big job, it's, it's a, a hard work, and God bless those aging veterans for getting out there on their old achy bones and, <laughs> and taking the time to, to pay respect to, to those who have, have served and sacrificed. We're going to try something new this year, I hope it works. Uh, maybe getting some Boy Scouts or some Girl Scouts out to, to, to help because I, I've done this in the past working over at, at Plymouth several years ago uh, and there's, there, the cemeteries aren't large but the rows are long and it gets, it, gets to be, it gets to be tedious after a while 
especially if you're not used to walking, and you're walking on uneven ground, and you, you've got one guy with a clipboard hollering names and three guys putting down flags, so it, it does get to be work, but uh, it's a daunting task. Yeah. And uh, thanks to the taxpayers of Sheboygan County, we've been able to afford the flags. Uh, they've gone from, when I started, from 18 cents a piece up to 47 cents a piece. And uh, unfortunately, uh, the events of 9-11, uh, the, price, the price went up uh, two and a half times just hmm. from, from, from demand. Huh? Yes. So. Well, you mentioned old uh, creaking bones or not. These veterans and their organizations, and there's 26 across the county, they're active, they're making good things happen in the community. In fact, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, we had Student Gover Government Day at Sheboygan mm -hmm. County, and the Legionnaires always put that on and, and do a nice job bringing young people in to get a flavor of county government. Please share a little bit about what these 26 organizations are about and some of their activities in the community, because I think a lot of people may not appreciate what it is they do. There's a lot of, they, <clears throat> there, it, you, really, you hardly know where to start. I think uh, the, uh, the American Legion with their, youth, with their Youth Government Day, they also uh, sponsor a thing called Badger Boys State, which uh, is, goes on over at Griffin College. That's a week-long uh, session with state government officials. Uh, the, the VFW, I think a lot of them sponsor essay contests, you know, uh, write or speak for scholarships. Uh, uh, flags in schools. A lot of veterans, uh, through organizations and individually, as a favor to their grandkids, go to school and schools and talk about their their involvement in the war. Uh, just uh, I think this past fall or this winter, uh, the Vietnam Veterans Group found a flagpole over at Wildwood Cemetery without a light on it. So they got together with the city. Uh, the the Veterans Group came up with the money. Uh, the city came up with what had to be done, and now the the flag. There's a light on the flagpole. And, and that's, a lot of the things that go on are probably really never publicized anywhere other than uh, within the veterans community. The right. Right. Flag Day, the Flag Day program up at Sunny Ridge and out at Rocky Knoll, the Veterans Day programs at Sunny Ridge and Rocky Knoll, the veterans organizations who uh, get together and, and what has to be done. Uh, we do some of it, the activities uh, at facilities do some of it, and we have a nice program. Yeah. And as you said, a lot of it just goes on year after year without a lot of fanfare. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a credit to the community right. as a whole, the work right. that they're doing. So if someone is watching this program, of a veteran in particular, and they haven't been active with one of these organizations, how would one look into that, or are there different eligibility requirements for each of these 26 organizations, or how does yes. that work? We have a, our office prints a brochure that's made available, lists all the organizations, the county, and a contact point. And yeah, each one, uh, the military order, the Purple Heart, obviously you have to have the Purple Heart. Mm -hmm. uh, veterans of foreign wars, obviously you need to have served on foreign soil and be issued uh, a medal commensurate with that, that war period. Uh, the other ones, the Vietnam Veterans of America, uh, the AMVETS, uh, and all of those. Each one has their own set of rules that need to be followed, and they're relatively simple. Basically, an honorable discharge and, and uh, service within their parameters. Are you seeing, because of the current membership, uh, a decline, as you said, with the passing of uh, veterans each year, or is there some renewed membership and energy well, going into the organizations because of what's happening across the world? It's hard to say. <clears throat> some, pla some places you see an increase and some, some uh, uh, a decrease. You know, the, uh, uh, I don't know if some of the organizations like uh, the Polish Legion of American Veterans and the Catholic War Veterans and things like that uh, are small groups and they probably at one time were very big uh, before the other org uh, other organizations came along, the more organizations have you, the thinner you spread out the population, and uh, I think probably uh, those who do stay with them stay with them for the activities and things that they can participate in. Someone who's not a veteran or a young person who might be watching this, Memorial Day comes and goes, but um, with the importance of it, what advice would you give an individual? in regards to what to say to a veteran or how to show your appreciation? Well, just say thank you. That doesn't take a lot. Thank you. If it's a cold day, give him a cold, offer him a cold glass of water. Or if it's a warm day, 
uh, or you know, just something to say. And and if nothing else, you know, try to try to at least if you can't be a model citizen, at least try to be a good citizen. You know, that doesn't take a lot either. It, you know, uh, you might get laughed at for doing the right thing, but you know, you know in your heart that that somewhere along the way, uh, if somebody hadn't stood up and and taken a stand. Uh, we probably would also be speaking a foreign language and, and not being able to gather like we do and things like that. Yeah, very good. Well, we only have a few minutes remaining, Jim. Is there anything else you'd like to, to share or touch on before we, before the program ends? <laughs> well, you know, I, the uh, we have talked to, uh, probably informally about the budget process, and I looked through that and following the uh, looking at the three uh, percent that percentile that we cut, and I. I, I Kind of wonder how, on a hundred and thirty-nine thousand dollar budget, that that's going to be accomplished. I had uh, I looked at that figure based on what on three percent, and that's the cost of our cemetery flags. So I, I see a challenge coming. Sure. I see a challenge coming not next year, probably next month is when we start our budget process. And what what Jim's referring to is the two thousand six annual budget process that we've just begun to look at preliminary figures and information and countywide to address the financial gap that we're going to have if we spread the pain out evenly amongst every department after you build in the wage and benefit increases the utility and ongoing operational cost increases we project that every department would have to reduce their department by three percent after building that all in but Jim's right. I mean, you can't squeeze blood from a turnip, and the smaller departments, especially one like Veteran Services, that has Jim as the director or the Veteran Services officer and one employee, you're not going to be able to garner a lot of savings. Jim's been able to do so over the years in the past, but you get to a point where really priorities have to be established, mm -hmm. and that's why I give the county board a lot of credit for going through this program evaluation and prioritization approach, because not every program, service, department is created equal. And of course, some departments, due to their size and scope, may have more opportunity to tighten their belts than others. So the process will ensue, but I think Jim makes a very good point, and I would be very surprised to see the county board suggest reductions in purchasing flags or things that really are important and need to continue. So with that, Jim, I want to again thank you for your time and a very informative overview of your roles and responsibilities and some of the things happening in the community. I hope you have time and I hope everyone uh, takes the time to uh, take part in a program this Memorial Day someplace. You know, some, if it's nothing more than going out to the cemetery when the ceremonial unit does the rifle volley and it taps, at least, at least it shows that you had enough interest and cared enough to spend a few minutes with it anyway. Well done and well said, Jim. On behalf of the Sheboygan County Board and myself, Adam Payne, we want to thank Jim Riesenberg for being our guest and obviously the tremendous job and service he provides to the veterans and their families in this community. Next month, it's our hope to have Dean Ray Hernandez here to talk a little bit about some of the real exciting things happening out here at UW Sheboygan. So until then, thank you very much for joining us.